This is question three. It is a, an analytical geometry question. It looks long, so I am going to start immediately. They say to us, TSK is drawn. Okay, triangle T, S, K, it's a triangle. There's T, there's S, there's K. It means all of these are straight lines. Remember, a triangle is a polygon, and a polygon is made up of straight lines. Why is that important? Because if you have parallel lines, you must have a straight line that cuts it. Okay, else those angles won't be equal, amongst other things. Okay, so let's see. The equation of ST they've given us, they said this is y is equal to a half a x plus 6. Now important that I think we're going to need here is the fact that that gradient is a half. I don't know, just I could have a feeling that that's going to happen. Okay, ST cuts wait, the x-axis over here at M. W minus 4, 4, which is this point, lies on the line segment ST, and R lies on SK. Now, where's SK? Oh, there's SK. There is R. And they say it lies on SK such that WR is parallel to the y-axis. So immediately I'm going to stop and I'm going to say, okay, that angle is equal to this one if I need it. And this little angle here, I'm going to put a dot in it, is equal to that angle over there. Um, because those are corresponding angles. And it's also equal then to this angle over here because of either alternate or vertically opposite angles. Okay, we read on. WK cuts the x-axis at V. So there's another point where WK is cutting the axis. So the axis is cut in, in full three times here. Okay, WK cuts at V and the y-axis at P. So they've also given us, let me just change color there. They've given us the y-intercept as the P04. KS produced cuts the x-axis at N. My goodness, there was a lot of reading in this question. Okay, and TSK is theta. TSK is the angle theta. Okay, now let's see. What is the first question that they want us to calculate? They say to us, calculate the gradient of W. P. Now, WP, let's go back to our diagram. If we want the gradient of WP, WP, where's W? Here's W, and P, I have a suspicion, is right here, and that's a K. Where is my, oh, there's P. So I want the gradient of this line over there. Okay, so that's quickly, we know our gradient formula. Our gradient formula tells us it will be um, the y value of w minus the y value of p over the x value of w minus the x value of p. Now just a reminder, w was at minus 4 and positive 4, and the point p was the point 0 and negative 4. Okay, so we can plug in here the y value of um, w is 4, minus minus 4 is positive 8, over the x value of double, oh, hang on, hang on, let me take that away there. We're looking at the y value of w, I'm not sure if I looked at the right one, yeah, minus the y value of p, sorry, it is indeed 8. The x value of w is minus 4 minus 0, is minus 4, so that gradient is indeed negative 2. We've got the gradient of the line. Let's go and put it on the line. This gradient is negative 2. Now look at what just happened. With this gradient negative 2, the gradient of WP and WT, this just became 
a right angle. If I need it, I've got a right angle on that diagram because those two gradients multiply to give us minus 1. Let us see the next question. Ah, look at what they're asking us. They're asking us to show that those two are perpendicular and it's for two marks. So we're just going to argue the gradient um, of, what did we find here, WP multiplied by the gradient of ST is equal to minus 2. We've written down the gradient of ST right in the beginning. It was a half, so that result is minus 1. Therefore, WP is indeed perpendicular to ST. It was for a 2 marks. It's quick. Don't make a silly mistake like I thought I did when I worked out that gradient. Okay, make sure, because this work is so easy, folks, you can make silly errors. Don't fall into traps. Okay, the next one looks interesting. They now give us an equation of SK as 5X um, plus 2Y, uh, 5Y plus 2X plus 60. Let's go and put that up there. 5y, uh, wrong color, 5y, there, plus 2x, and they said the last is plus 60. That is the equation of um, sk. Now remember, k is the point here at the bottom. So that's the equation of this line over here, from s to k. Now immediately if we wish to, we can write it in the form mx plus c. So minus 2 over 5 um, x, so the gradient is minus 2 fifths, plus 60 divided by 5 is still 12. Okay, so we have the gradient in case we need that gradient. Now look at what they're asking us. They're asking us to find the coordinates of s. Okay, now folks, what happens at s? We can see at S that the line here, this line, is intersecting with this line. So I'm going to make them equal. I've already got their Y values together by itself. So I can go and I can just quickly go and solve for X and come back and solve for Y. Okay, so we do that. We go in. Our one equation was a half of x plus 6 was equal to minus 2 fifths of x plus 12. Now the very, very first thing I always do when I see a fraction is I get rid of it. I do not like working with fractions. They make me enormously nervous. Okay. So if I now double up everything, or I times it by 10, basically, I get 5x here. My 5x plus 30, um, that's 5 times the 2 afterwards. Remember, I'm timesing it actually with 10. So let's just do that properly. That becomes 5x plus 60, which is equal to times by 10 minus 4x plus 120 on this side. Here I get 9x if I isolate my x, and on the other side I get 100 and... No, I get 60. Let's just make sure that we have everything correct. Is that indeed a plus 12? Let's go back. It is not because it went over the equal sign. It is a minus 12. Okay, so let's just fix that. No problem. No problem. We go in and we say, no, this is indeed a minus. The answer just looked very strange for me at that point. Okay, so that gives me minus, if you look at the x going over to the right-hand side, I get minus 180, which then gives me x equal to minus 20. So I've got the x coordinate for s so far. Now I need the y coordinate. I go back to any one of those two equations and I plug minus 20 into it. 
So let's go to the left hand side one. Y is equal to a half times minus 20, um, the x that goes in there, plus 6, so that gives minus 10, plus 6, and that leaves us with minus 4 as the y coordinate for s. So round off beautifully and give your answer in coordinate pair form. Minus 20 minus 4 is the coordinates of s. Let's see what's next. The length of wr. Now let's go back to our diagram. w has the coordinate pair minus 4 and 4 and r we do not have a coordinate pair for r. But look at what we can do folks. We can say okay here x is actually negative 4 because it's a vertical line. It's parallel to the y-axis. Now if I take my equation here and I make x minus 4 in that equation I can find the y value. So let's go and do that directly on the page where we're supposed to do it. Minus and that, and I must just remember this was a negative. Okay, let's go back to our page. Okay, we've got x is equal to minus 4 as our x value. Okay, so x equals minus 4 goes into our one equation. Now remember that gave us for s. s was the point minus 4 and not s, w was the point minus 4 and 4. Let's just make sure. Yeah, w was the point minus 4 and 4 and all I need is the point that I am heading for at the bottom of all of this and that is the point that is labeled as R. So to find the point R I need to use this equation, the one over here, to find the Y value. Okay, so Y is equal to minus 2 over 5 times that X minus 12 and the X is minus 4. So that gives us 8 over 5 minus 12 and minus 12 um, gives us indeed um, what is it? Minus 12 gives us 60 so let us see here 12 is 50 it's 60 that we have over 5 so 8 minus 60 divided by 5 is what I'm looking for and I get minus 52 over 5. Okay, now remember that was a vertical line. Okay, so we're only looking at the y values. Here the y value was 4. Here the y value was minus 52 over 5. And what do I have to do? I've got to subtract those two because it's a vertical distance. Okay, so the length of wr will then be if I go and I subtract the 2, I get 4 minus minus 52 over 5. And folks, that's beautiful calculator work will get you to 72 over 5 units for the length of that line at 3.5. Okay, a little bit of a thinking to be done there, but we, the moment we saw it was vertical, we were okay with this question. Now they're asking us, the second last question, is to find the value of theta. Now, just a quick reminder, where's theta? It's where the line here, this line has a gradient of minus 2 over 5, this one, and that line had a gradient of a half. Okay, so I always, always, always tell my students draw a horizontal through that point because then you can use that gradient and let's call that alpha 1 and this here is going to be alpha 2 and the whole angle that we want is theta and theta is going to be this angle plus that angle so I just need 
in this point to use my arctan formulas. I've got to go and find those two angles. So for theta, just a quick reminder, we had a situation like that. That was theta. We put a horizontal through. We said that's alpha 1. This is alpha 2 down here. This had a gradient of a half, and that had a gradient of minus 2 fifths. So how do I find alpha 1? Well, I inverse tan of a half. If I take the inverse tan of a half, I get 26,57 degrees. For alpha 2, something interesting is going to happen. I have a negative gradient, folks, and that will, if I put it into my calculator, the tan angle is going to be negative, which means it's in the fourth quadrant. Okay, you get the answer as minus 21,8, and it's because of the direction in which we're measuring it. So the angle theta is going to be the 26,57 degrees plus 21,8, not negative 21,8, 21,8. And that gives you 48,37 degrees for that angle. Okay, last question. They say to us, we have, if we extend this angle here, if we extend here, we've got a point over here, which we're going to call, um, what is it, what did they call it? They called it SWR, sorry, it comes from here, SWR, and then that point would lie over here. That will be a point which they called L. Now they want us to find the area of this figure over here. Now remember, um, we've got the angle theta if we need it. We have a vertical line. Look at this. We have a vertical line of which we have the length, I think it was 72 over 5. And we can find the distance between the coordinate at S and the coordinate at W. Okay, so let us go back there. Let's go back and let's draw the information that we have. A little bit too much. We had a vertical line. We calculated the distance of the vertical line up here. is 72.5. Okay, it's vertical because it was parallel to the x-axis. Then we had the point S here. And the coordinates for point S was minus 20 and minus 4. And this line had an x value of minus 4. It's a vertical line. The moment I saw the angle, I thought, oopsie, I've got to apply my area rule. But folks, it's not necessary. I've got a vertical line, and I can work out the perpendicular to it. This distance here is what I just found. Okay, and that distance there is 16. So the area of the full figure SWRL is twice the area of the triangle, which is a half base multiplied by the height. Now, folks, that simple little calculator work, that gets you to 230,4 units squared.